In this painting guide, we'll check out three different schemes for the B2 battle droid. The B-2 battle droid is one of the most iconic figures of the Clone Wars. The heavy thud of their clanking advance punctuated by the roar of their mighty arm cannon struck fear into the hearts of even the boldest Republic trooper. Today we'll be looking at three unique painting schemes to bring these mighty stalwarts of the Separatist forces to the tabletop. In our B-2 battle droid expansion, we get enough pieces to make six different droids, including three standard troopers, two heavy weapon variants, and of course our unit leader. These wonderful sculpts are made from that beautiful new hard plastic, which means we should use plastic cement to assemble them. So trim them all up and follow as per the instructions. Up first is the classic Chrome Dome, the gunmetal killing machine that first captured our attention in Attack of the Clones as they rained down fire upon the beleaguered Jedi forces on Geonosis. For this first battle droid, we're going to apply a smooth, even prime with the Lead Belcher Spray from Citadel Games Workshop, but if you don't have this spray to hand, you can just as easily prime with any other surface primer and then apply a base coat of Lead Belcher by hand. The spray does give you a smoother, more even finish that's nice and thin, and it will also save you a little bit of time as well. Up next, we'll go for a heavy null oil wash applied to the entire model. I actually like to do two passes of this step, applying my wash, letting it dry completely, and then repeating the process to really build up the recessed detail in all of the shadows. There's a lot of beautiful crisp details in all of these droid models, so getting that wash really heavily through those recesses really allows you to make that detail pop. Once that null oil washes down, you can see all of the beautiful definition in those recessed details, but now it's time to focus on the highlights and really build up the profile of this droid armor. So I'm gonna grab some Stormhost Silver, the really bright silver from Citadel Games Workshop, and we're gonna dry brush once again the entire model. I'm really focusing here on building up some lovely crisp highlights on all of those hard edges. So I'm gonna use a larger brush and dry brush in circular motions all over the model and make sure that I've got really lovely defined lines. You can do a little bit of toning on the broader flat sections as well, which just creates some brighter spots in the center of those flat regions, which creates a lovely graduated tone between the center, the mid-tones, the highlights, and of course that recessed detail from the Null Noil. Our silver scheme is coming along really nicely, and now we're going to bring in a little bit of that machine detail by applying a wet blended mix of Agrax Earthshade and Typhus Corrosion. So we'll grab some Agrax Earthshade first, and we want to hit the lower abdomen torso plating. This is a really nice brown tint that just creates a sort of two-tone effect between those two regions of the model. We'll also use that Agrax Earthshade to establish all the detail of those droidy oils and lubricants leaking out of all of the joints as these parts are moving around the battlefield. So we're going to apply them to the elbow joints, up around the shoulder as it joins into the torso, the knees, the ankles, anywhere that you want a little spot of color. And then while that Agrax Earthshade is still wet, we're going to grab some Typhus Corrosion, which is a textured technical paint from Games Workshop, and we're going to apply that into the wet worked areas and blend the paints together. And that way we'll get a really subtle graduation between the Typhus, which is a, a browny, greasy, kind of gritty slick, and that'll look really well blended into the armor plates, like it's dripping out of all of the droid components. Components. Once again, we want to let those shade layers fully dry, and then we're just going to grab a little bit of lead belcher and dry brush over that lower torso plating, which was tinted back with the Agrax Earthshade. This just re-establishes the highlights and gives them a lovely crisp hit on all of those hard lines on the lower torso plating, whilst keeping the lovely Agrax Earthshade toning in the recesses. Every B2 battle droid needs his single bright red eye, so I'm using some bloody red from Vallejo or Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop and putting a single dot over the eye. I also mixed up a little bit of highlight, brightening that red with a yellow just to make that eye really pop. So our B2 is looking pretty solid now, but he is quite monochromatic. He's silver, and there's just not enough going on. So what I'm going to do now is a targeted recess wash over all of the silver armor plating with Agrax Earthshade. And what that does is it brings more of that grimy brown into the recess detail whilst maintaining our beautiful crisp silver highlights through the mid-tones and, of course, our raised details. So it's really important that we just target the deepest section, so take a small fine detail brush, load it up with a little bit of shade, and drag your brush into the recessed detail between two overlapping armor plates. And if you spill or some of it goes on a flatter region, just wash out your brush and come back in with water and sort of flatten that off and blend it between the armor plate and the recessed detail. It takes a little bit of time, work your way over the entire model, but you can see the model gets so much more definition and so much more visual interest having a little bit of that browny tone, taking it out of being completely mono chromatic. 
So with the main model finished, I'm gonna give the base itself a coat with charred brown from Vallejo, and then give the entire model a matte varnish. And now it's time for basing. Now we all know and love these fantastic, classic chrome dome B2 battle droids from Geonosis, so what better place to basing? So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Mars Earth basing material, which you can purchase over at Zorpazorp.com, and I'm gonna apply that to the base using some of the Geek Gaming Scenic's fast drying basing glue. Put this glue down all over the base, give it about 10 minutes to start going tacky, and then just dip your model straight into the basing mix and he's ready to take the fight to the Republic. I've always loved the red carapace of the Droidica, and bringing that flavour into the armour plating of the B2s is a popular scheme with many players, so up next we're going to crack open some Citadel contrast paints to really build up that red lustre. As always, we're going to start with a lovely smooth prime of Lead Belcher, although just like before, you could do this by hand if you don't have the spray close by. With these next two schemes, I am going to bring a little bit more of that two-tone theme coming in. So we're going to apply our first coat, which is our Flesh Terror's Red Contrast, all over the armor plating, except for the lower torso, the groin, and the weapon. And that's going to give us two distinct regions, which give the model a little bit more detail. Now, when we're applying these contrast paints, we want to do the entire model in one layer, make sure it's all drying at the same time. So work quickly with a large brush, and then bring in a finer point brush to clean up around those areas that we're avoiding and make sure you get an even coat that doesn't have too much over pooling so the contrast does its work properly. Just like with a shade layer, give that contrast plenty of time to dry. And now once again, we're going to bring in a dry brushing layer to crisp up all of those highlights. But this time, we're going to use something more in vain of our color scheme. And I'm going to go with Brass Scorpion from Games Workshop Citadel. This is a really lovely brassy metallic that has a bit of a red undertone. So it's the perfect mid-tone and highlight to go over the top of our Flesh Terror's contrast. So once again, small circular motions all over that red armor, crisping up those hard lines where armor plates are joining and really gently over the center of flat panels to create some lovely brassy mid-tones all over the armored carapace. You can see with that dry brush down, the two-tone effect is really coming together. We've got the beautiful red carapace and of course our lower torso and some of the groin is still silver. So what we're going to do now is tone those regions with Agrax Earthshade to keep them in that silver vein but give them a little bit of that lovely grimy look. And then we're going to apply Agrax all over those joints just like we did with the first model and then bring in some Typhus Corona erosion to create all of those lovely lubricants. So hit all of the ankles, knees, shoulders, and you'll have some fantastic oil leaking from your B2. With the browner tint of the Agrax sitting in the recesses of that lower torso plating, that silver is sort of brought a lot more into the overall ready scheme of the model, but it's still got some really lovely contrast between the red and the silver. But to crisp that up just a little bit more, we'll grab some lead belcher and give that a dry brush just to establish those lovely highlights and really create some nice contrast between our two different painted regions. Once again, we'll grab ourselves a little dot of red paint and hit that in the eye of the B2. Make sure you do use a smaller brush for this because you don't want to spill it into the recess around the eye joint. You just want to hit the eye itself and then you can add a little bit of highlight if you want to give it a pop once again by mixing in some yellow. And now I'm going to grab some Storm Vermin Fur and apply that all over the base. And then once that's dry, give the whole model a matte varnish. Now, I really wanted to go for something striking for the basing materials for this red scheme and I really decided that it'd be fun if this kind of ready a droid represented a battalion from Mustafar, maybe defending the Separatist leaders as Anakin and Obi-Wan arrive. So I've got some of my Volcanic Island base ready material, which is a lovely mix of black sands and chunky aggregates, which is perfect for doing Mustafar. Once again, available from my online store at Zorbazorp.com. So dip yourself a little bit of glue all over the base and then let that dry for 10 minutes. Dip the model straight in the basing mix and your droids are ready to defend the mining operations on Mustafar. With a variety of snow and ice worlds like Scipio involved in the conflicts in the Clone Wars, I really wanted to explore a cool toned, almost matte armor style with this next scheme, while still maintaining a little hint of the metallic gleam. So we're going to start once again with the Lead Belcher spray, applying nice and evenly all over the model, and then we're going to keep that two-tone zone happening, and we're going to apply the Ultramarine's blue contrast all over the lower plating once again, except for that lower torso, the groin, and the weapon. Now you could certainly change up these zones maybe have the arms stay silver or different regions of the carapace and really kind of pick out certain plates, but I'm keeping it simple for now. 
As always, apply this layer in one large pass, making sure that everything's drying at the same time. Apply it with a bigger brush first and then come in with a fine tip to clean up around the edges of the arm joints, the groin, and there's a few little armor plates over the groin, which you need to pick out in blue, particularly the sides of those plates, but you don't want to get the groin itself uh, tarnished with that blue and you want to keep that silver. So make sure a small brush to finish it off. Once that Ultramarine's blue contrast is completely dry, we're gonna grab some lead belcher in the paint pot and dry brush that all over the entire model. Now, the reason we're returning to this paint rather than the Stormho Silver is I want something that's a bit darker, a bit more muted, so I can keep the scheme pretty matte further on, but it still gives us that metallic gleam. So you can get that all over the edges and the central plating, and this really builds up the metallic element of our armored carapace. With that dry brush down, we can really see the raised detail popping on the model, but we're gonna accentuate that even further by edge highlighting every single armor panel with some rust gray. Now this is a lovely light blue gray. It's the perfect highlight to go over the Ultramarine's blue contrast. And by carefully applying lovely little edge highlights on all of the raised areas with a fine detail brush, we really kick up that contrast and really give the model a bit of pop and a bit of life. And it does sort of mute those highlights highlights or at least take them out of the silver space and push them into more of a matte look but because we've got that dry brush underneath the paint uh, and it's all through those central areas as well it still feels like armor it still feels like a metallic element but it's just not as bright and shiny as our chrome and our red look and I quite like this look for creating a different style of armor you could even mix and match these techniques by having different regions a bit more matte different regions a bit more metallic and that's sort of what we're doing by running this two-tone scheme keeping our groin and central region metallic. So apply that edge highlight all over the model and you'll see as you pick out all of these little details, it just gains so much definition and it really catches the eye. Now with the lovely bright highlights from that rust gray, I don't really want the silver regions to be the pop that catches the eye. So I'm gonna push them into the dark sort of space by applying the black Templar contrast all over that lower torso, the groin and the weapon. And this darkens them. It's even darker than like a null noil, but we're essentially using it in the same way here. And that makes them really kind of sink into the model and helps those blue layers really shine. Once that black Templar is finished, we're gonna come back with a little bit of lead belcher and give those a dry brush both over the weapon, the gun barrel, and that lower torso so that they still have that little metallic element, but they're still quite nice and dark. And then we're gonna finish off the eye by grabbing a little dot of red and highlighting it up with mixing in some yellow just to give that beautiful blue a pop. Now you could mix up these eye colors as well. Maybe you wanna go a green eye against the blue armor or mix and match in some way, but I just love the red eye. It's, you know, very HAL 9000, very evil. Uh, and I do love that in a dominating droid warrior. Once again, I'm gonna use some Storm Vermin fur all over the base rim and then give the model a nice matte varnish. And then we're gonna dive into using some snow powder. This is some fantastic new snow powder that we've got on the online store now. I'm absolutely in love with it. Put down some uh, Geek Gaming fast drying basing glue and then dip the model in the snow. You do wanna tap a fair bit of it off, but then what you can also do is sort of sprinkle it all over the top. You can put a little thin layer of glue in different pieces, make it look like it's been snowing on the droid. as he's fighting in these snowy landscapes. Uh, so it's a really kind of dynamic way to bring some interesting detail and grit to the model uh, that makes the whole kind of model feel really uniform. I, I really like this look and I'm happy with how it's turned out. So there we have three unique but very achievable schemes for the mighty B2 battle droid. I'm really happy with how they're turned out and I think the biggest takeaway for me is that a lot of the application process and techniques is very similar. There's a few little different tricks in each scheme but it's basically the same steps and I'd love you guys at home to kind of use that process and change it however you like. If you want to bring in a little bit of a green or go for a purple or change the color hue all you need to do is swap out the pigments but the process is the same. Try a different contrast paint, try a different highlight accent, mix it up and see what you can come up with to create some really cool B2 battle droids to take the fight to the Republic. So there we have three schemes for the B2 battle droid. I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out. I especially like that red scheme. There's something that always appeals to me with the classic chrome look, but I love droidicas. I love that red carapace. So there's definitely something there. Maybe I could do like a special unit of, of B2s that have the red armor, make them kind of themed like the separatist equivalent of the Bad Batch. Definitely something that we might see in future narrative campaigns. You'll have to wait and see. But yeah, really happy with how those have turned out. If you guys would like to check out the process in more, 
more detail, make sure you check out the first edition of Bantha Magazine. It's an awesome new e-magazine that's coming out just for Star Wars Legion. It's got uh, miniature painting tutorials, basing guides, terrain guides, all sorts of juicy info. There's custom cards, lots of fantastic Star Wars Legion content, all packed in one place. I'll put the link down in the description so that you guys can wrap your eyes on that because it is a fantastic new publication coming out by some mates of mine and definitely worth checking out. Make sure you hit that up. If you guys are enjoying the content we're doing here on the channel, definitely let me know down in the comments. What uh, B2 schemes are you planning on doing? Did you like the red look? Did you like the classic chrome? You can do something like crazy green or blue. I'd love to hear about it. If you're painting any up, make sure you throw some photos up on our Facebook group. The link is down below. And if you want to support the channel, please head over to Patreon and uh, consider making some pledges. Uh, without our Patreon, none of this would be possible. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time in the next Star Wars Legion tutorial. Cheers, guys. And, and battle report. They're coming. They're coming.